presenting the adventures of Jungle Jim. Last week, Jungle Jim, Kolo, and Shanghai Lil reached Shanghai in their plane, but were unable to land because of a thick fog. Using up the fuel from her emergency tank every moment she was forced to stay in the air, Lil tried desperately to establish radio contact with the airport for aid in landing. Meanwhile, on the steamship, Lin Chalmers was caught eavesdropping by the mysterious Chinese prince, Lin Pu, and forced at the point of a gun to enter cabin 307. The thrilling adventures of Jungle Jim are pictured each Sunday in the Comic Weekly, the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure. The Comic Weekly, each page printed in full colors, is distributed everywhere as an integral part of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. And now we continue our story. On board the Shanghai-bound steamer, as the door of cabin 307 closes behind her, Lynn Chalmers finds herself facing a huge glass-topped desk. At one corner of it sits a studious-looking Chinese with close-cropped hair and thick spectacles, which give his eyes a peculiarly bulbous appearance. The man jumps to his feet. Lin Pu, who is this lady? Ah, did I not tell you we were being spied upon, my friend? She is a spy? No, I'm not. Mr. Lin Pu, I wasn't spying on you. Quiet. I was... Sit down. In this chair. <laughs> yes, my friend. As I expected when I opened door sudden, I found eavesdropper. Ah, charming, beautiful, but still eavesdropper. I tell you, I wasn't spying on you, Mr. Lin Pu. Then what are you doing outside door? Suppose you permit me to question uninvited guest, my friend. Very well, Lin Pu. Now, Missy, <laughs> you will tell us your name. I'm Lin Chalmers. You are traveling alone? No, my father's with me. He's confined to our cabin by illness. You are going to Shanghai? Yes. For what reason? It doesn't concern you. And gentlemanly as it is to contradict woman, I assure you knowledge of your reasons is of utmost importance to me. Why are you going to Shanghai? To join my mother. Indeed. You don't believe me? Believe you? Oh, yes, Missy, of course. And why are you joining your mother? But you must know. I must. I'm joining her so that she can nurse my father back to health. Your reason is most excellent. Uh, what does your father do for a living? Dad is a missionary assigned to the foreign fields. We have just returned from a trip to the northern jungles. Northern jungles? Lin Pu? Uh, yes, my friend, I heard. You leave questioning to me. Do you hear? Yes, Lin Pu. Excuse intruding. Now, Missy, you tell us. And I hope you give satisfactory explanation. Why were you listening outside our door? Well, you see, I happened to be passing, and I heard a voice. It must have been that of your friend here. Say, I tell you, Lin Pu, we can't fail now that Jungle Jim is dead. I am not surprised you heard my friend. He has not learned to modulate his voice. Lin Pu. But he will. He will. I did not mean speak loudly. Excuse me. Quiet. You will proceed, Missy. It was at the mention of Jungle Jim's name that I stopped. You see, he's a friend of mine. And I thought I might learn more of what happened to him. Ah, so you are acquainted with Jungle Jim. Yes. Oh, tell me truly, is he really dead? I am sorry to break news to you, Missy. According to Laporte, Jungle Jim Bradley lies at bottom of sea. Oh, Jim. Uh, but since you were a friend of his, you can be much help to us. I can be of help to you? I don't know what you're talking about. Of course not. Perhaps I have been a bit hasty. I humbly beg forgiveness for this uh, apparent uh, inquisition. But I can honestly assure you, my friend and I must look upon all strangers with suspicion. It's quite all right, Mr. Lindu. I don't blame you. I was foolish enough to put myself under suspicion. You are most gracious, Missy. And now, you are free to go whenever you wish. Then if you don't mind, I think I'd better go right now. Uh, permit me to open door. Thank you. Good uh, oh. night. Uh, one, one moment, Missy. Yes? Allow me to look down first. It will be better if no one sees you leave cabin. You're probably right. Please see that the coast is clear. Ah, there is no one inside. <laughs> Good night, Missy Chalmers. Good night. Now, my friend, let us get to work again. On me, those reports. At one. Here you are, Linfo. It is not fitting for a servant to question integrity of master's judgment. Hmm. Well, 
What is on end of your tongue? Speak. Why did you release girl? Fool that you are. Would you have me allow his whole sheep by holding her prisoner? I have better plans. Meanwhile, Shanghai Lil's plane carrying Jungle Jim and Kolo zooms over the city of Shanghai, circling around in the impenetrable fog. Lil desperately tries to establish radio contact with the airport. Shanghai Airport, I need your help to guide me in. Can you hear me, Shanghai? Where are you, Shanghai? Answer me. NC-191 calling Shanghai Airport. Jim, are you all right back there? Yeah, so far so good. How are you making out? Well, I don't want to scare you, but as the doctor would say, the picture isn't particularly encouraging. I can't get a squeak out of the airport. Are you sure they've got a radio transmitter? If they haven't, then I'd hate to be flying the China Clipper. Oh, they must have, Jim. I'll try a few minutes longer. How's the gasoline? My engine's burning it up like nobody's business. That's why I'm only going to try a few minutes longer. Then it'll be a case of making a forced landing or hitting the silk. You mean bailout? That's right, Jim. It'll be over the side for all of us. I hope we don't have to do that, Lil. Why? Are you scared? No, but Colo here wouldn't know what to do with a parachute. He'd either find out or else... You sure can think of the most unpleasant things. Keep a stiff upper lip, Jim. Here I go trying for that radio contact with the airport. NC-191 calling Shanghai Airport. NC-191 calling Shanghai Airport. Shanghai, answer quickly. SOS. SOS. XNDA Shanghai calling NC-191. What's the trouble? Oh, thank heavens you answered, Shanghai. I'm flying blind in this fog and almost out of fuel. XNDH, where's your radio beam? Or will you guide me in? NC-191, you don't need beam. Ceiling 500 feet. Come on in. Wind you west. You'll see the windsock when you drop below the cotton. Thanks, Shanghai. Hey, you don't sound like a native. Where are you from? Brooklyn, USA. Okay, Brooklyn, we'll be seeing you. Thanks a million. NC-191 signing off. Jim? Yes, Lil? Brooklyn says it's all clear below 500 feet. Brooklyn says... Who cares what it's like in Brooklyn? What about Shanghai? That's what I'm trying to tell you. A man from Brooklyn visits the Shanghai transmitter, and he says there's a 500-foot ceiling. Well, why don't you say so in the first place? All we've got to do is dive down to 500 feet and level off. That's right, Jim. He says we'll see the airport as soon as we get below this fog. Boy, that's the best news I've heard since we've been... Since I said I'd fly you to Shanghai, Jim? I have to hand it to you, Lil. You're a woman of your word. You said you'd fly me to Shanghai, and you have. But I'll be doggone if I can figure out what's behind this big-hearted gesture. Oh, it's no gesture, Jim. I had to come to Shanghai myself. And the fact that I love you prompted me to offer you the use of that back seat. I sure appreciate it. Maybe I can do something for you someday, Lil. Maybe you'll be able to. None of us knows what lies ahead. Well, there's no way of telling what lies ahead of me until I meet the American consul. You just hang on to your native boy back there. I'm going to land this crate. And the next stop will be the private office of the United States Consul in Shanghai. At that very moment, the Reverend Chalmers rouses from the drugged sleep brought on by the ship's doctor and gazes into the face of his daughter. Lynn. Oh, Dad, I thought you'd never wake up. It seems as though I've been sitting here for hours. Oh, thank heaven you're all right, Lynn. I was so worried about you. I'm sorry. You didn't need to be. I tried to get the doctor to search the ship for you. I couldn't remember the cabin you were going to, nor the name of the Chinese. Mr. Lin Fu. Of course, yes, that's it. But, but I couldn't think of it when I was trying to tell the doctor... So he thought I was delirious again and gave me something 
to put me to sleep. Poor Daddy. I'd have been back sooner, only I was delayed. I thought I was clever enough to get away with a little sleuthing, but I got caught. Oh, Lynn, I warned you not to eavesdrop. Now all the ship's officers will be talking about you. Oh, no, they won't, Dad. You've no idea how they discuss the passengers. And after catching you eavesdropping... They didn't catch me, Dad. But you said... Yes, I was caught, but Lin Poo did the catching. Lin Poo, the revolutionary? Yes. Oh, I had a premonition you were in danger. I wasn't, though. Mr. Lin Poo was very polite. Hmm? He asked me a few questions and then let me go. Did he mention anything about Jim Bradley? Yes. He said, according to reports, Jim is at the bottom of the sea. What? But while he was telling me that, I had a feeling there was something wrong with the reports. That Jim isn't dead at all. I hope that's true, Lin. I do hope Jim is safe and sound. When Mr. Lin Poo learned that I was a friend of Jim's, he said I could be of help. Oh? I told him I didn't know what he was talking about. And then he said, of course not. Perhaps he'd been a bit hasty. Then he apologized and let me go. I say, that's odd, isn't it? Quite a mysterious piece of business altogether. Isn't it? Have you mentioned this adventure to anyone else? No, Dad. Good. You must do nothing to arouse suspicion on the part of Lin Poo. He evidently released you so abruptly because he has some scheme in mind. That's what I thought too, Dad. Especially when he made me enter cabin 307 at the point of a gun. You see, now what did I tell you? There's something... Art going on in cabin 307. We must find out what it is. As soon as Shanghai Lil's plane landed at the airport, Jungle Jim took a taxi for the American consulate in the city of Shanghai. We find him now being greeted by the consul. This is a pleasant surprise, Bradley. Surprise? Why, I understood you sent for me to come up here. I did, but I haven't heard a word since my messenger left. I've scanned the passenger lists of each boat leaving Burawani, but your name hasn't been on them. Uh, did you sail under an alias? No, sir. I didn't sail at all. I came direct by plane. Just landed at the airport. Oh, I see. Come in. Cablegram from Burawani, sir. Thank you. Excuse me, Bradley. Oh, uh, Certainly. Well, I'll be... How did you learn I wanted you, Bradley? A Chinese named Lo Tung said he'd been sent by you to bring me. Lo Tung? Where is he? Where all bad China boys go, sir. He got shot. Good. That's one less of that gang to be dealt with. This cable is from my agent. He says you've left Burawani and that you were followed by a mysterious plane bearing purple triangles. Yes, I was. They fear you were dead. And so I would be if it hadn't been for the woman who flew me here. But here I am, safe and sound, sir. And I don't mind telling you, I'm curious to know why you sent for me. Bradley, your fame as a hunter and trapper is exceeded only by your reputation as a jungle detective and a crusader for right against Rome. Hmm, thank you, sir. I'm at your service. That's what I hoped you'd say. That's why I sent for you. Draw up that chair. Before I give you this assignment, I have a story to tell you. What story will the consul now reveal to Jungle Jim? Does he know what is behind the purple triangle? The dramatization you have just heard is based on incidents pictured in full-color action pictures appearing in the Comic Weekly. The big Comic Weekly printed in full color and distributed with your Hearst Sunday newspaper everywhere. In the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure, the Comic Weekly, you will find all the famous characters of the world of color pictures. There is a feature called Heroes of American History, which picturizes the careers of great men and women in the story of our country. There is also Bringing Up Father, Sentinel Louie, Barney Google, the Cats and Yammer Kids, Skippy, and many, many others. Don't forget your date to listen next week at the same time over the same station to a continuation of the adventures of Jungle Jim. Jungle Jim.